Anna Kendrick American Actress Anna Cook Kendrick is an American actress. Her first starring role was in the 1998 Broadway musical High Society, for which she earned a nomination for the Tony Award for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. She made her film debut in the musical comedy Camp and had a supporting role in The Twilight Saga. Born, August 9, 1985, age 39 years, Portland, Maine, United States. Height, 1.57 meters. Parents, William Kendrick, Janice Kendrick. Siblings, Michael Cook Kendrick. Awards, full list. Anna Kendrick was born in Portland, Maine, to Janice, Cook, an accountant, and William Kendrick, a teacher. She has an older brother, Michael Cook Kendrick, who has also acted. She is of English, Irish, and Scottish descent. For her role as Dinah in High Society on Broadway, Anna Kendrick was nominated for a Tony Award, Second Youngest Ever, a Drama Desk Award, and a Fanny Award, Best Actress Featured in a Musical. Her spectacular performance landed her the Drama League and Theatre World Award. She was a lead performer with Cabaret's Kit Kat Club at Carnegie Hall Live in My Favorite Broadway, The Leading Ladies, 1999, TV. She also had the privilege of working with director Scott Ellis and choreographer Susan Stroman at the New York City Opera House with Jeremy Irons amongst many more celebrity status actors, playing the role of Frederica in A Little Night Music. Anna workshopped Jane Eyre and The Little Princess for Broadway and starred in the feature film Camp, 2003, with director Todd Graff. Family Children No children Parents Janice Cook William Kendrick Relatives Michael Cook Kendrick Sibling Trademark Petite Frame Dairy often sings in her roles Often plays likable, awkward characters. Deadpan sarcastic sense of humor. Trivia. Jason Reitman cast her in Up in the Air, 2009, after seeing her performance in Rocket Science, 2007. In a relationship with British writer-director Edgar Wright from 2009 to 2013, after meeting on the set of Wright's Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, 2010. In 2014, she became romantically involved with British cinematographer Ben Richardson after meeting on the set of Drinking Buddies, 2013. The couple parted ways in 2020. Advocate for the Trevor Project Of mostly English, Irish, and Scottish ancestry, with many recent Canadian-born forebears, Anna is the daughter of William King Kendrick, a history teacher who also works in finance, and his wife, Janice, cook and accountant. Kendrick is the younger sister of Michael Cook Kendrick. Graduated from Deering High School, Portland, Maine, in 2003. Quotes People like to make fun of the fans who camp out but people have renaissance fairs, people do civil war reenactments, people do what they like. I'm tired of hearing people rage on the fans. If you don't like Twilight, don't buy a ticket. I guess I'm drawn to. I think, even when I read serious scripts, the moments that I connect to are the little glimpses of humor, because, you know, I think every script, no matter how serious it is, has bits of humor in it. Even End of Watch is really funny. So those are the moments where I can kind of see what I can do with it that's different, and I feel like that's the easiest way for me to get inside a character's head, is through the humor, like what sense of humor they have. On not being part of the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn, Part 2, 2012, I'm not in it. I don't know anything about it, so I'm excited just to see it, you know, as a normal moviegoer. While I wouldn't wish being teased on anyone, I think it eventually leads to a kind of solidarity in adult life. The few people I know who weren't picked on in school are people I find I can't relate to on much more than a surface level. There's a sensitivity that comes with feeling like an outsider at some point in your life. I'd rather be emotionally tuned in to other people than slightly more confident because no one ever made fun of my hair. I sort of marvel at myself. Maybe at a certain point everybody feels like the person they were when they were younger is a stranger, because I seem to be much more driven and focused at that age. I had the intention of being on Broadway. I am just very grateful that my parents treated me with respect. And really, really supported me. 
okay, I am happy with the way I look, but I have never, never, ever thought of myself as a pretty girl. Honestly. When I read some of these scripts I'm sent and they describe the heroine as incredibly beautiful, I wonder why they sent it to me. I also find myself thinking that she better also be pretty damn interesting, or I'm not going to want to play her. I actually went into one audition recently when the script called the character an Anna Kendrick type and I thought to myself, what the heck is that, anyway? There was another girl sitting in the room and she was so much prettier than me and I thought, guys, just what are you looking for? I do admit that I've never been one to fit in easily to any given pattern. It's not my choice. It's just the way I am. So if the characters I wind up playing are all a bit different, it must be because that's the way I like it. Anna Kendrick is different, and she's going to stay that way. On being lazy while filming Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, 2010, I have an older brother, and when I told him about the movie he said, Oh, so you've been preparing for this movie for 24 years. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm just being me. I was so lazy. I had source material and the real Stacy Pilgrim and I'm still just playing me. Laughs. An actor should always let humility outweigh ambition. I'm really glad that the Oscar stuff is over, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I am infinitely grateful, I'm so lucky, but it's been a really crazy year. You're constantly wearing clothes someone else picked out for you, delivering sound bites instead of real feelings, and walking into rooms full of people you don't know. I didn't become an actor for any of that, so it's been kind of a confusing time for me. I'll tell you, the really humbling moment is the moment that you get home from the Golden Globes or the BAFTAs or the Oscars, and you sit on your bed, which is the same crappy IKEA bed you've had since you were 18, and you put on an old episode of Family Guy, 1999, and you have a frozen meal, and you're trying not to get macaroni and cheese on your thousand dollar gown. It's luck, pure and simple. I mean, I work very, very hard, but I don't take any of this for granted, and I don't think any of it is because I'm better or more talented than other actors. There are people who work at least as hard as me, and are twice as talented, and nobody's asking them about makeup secrets. There is a lot of luck to how my life's turned out. I've been pretty lucky in terms of the films I've been in, and having a slow and steady build, I have done smaller films that a lot of people in the industry have seen, and I feel sort of fortunate that it hasn't been this overnight thing. I'm hoping that it continues to be this slow and steady thing so that I can take a deep breath and get used to it. We were just in the recording studio for Into the Woods, 2014, and The Rescuers Down Under, 1990, came on, and Emily Blunt and I and a bunch of PAs sat around watching it. It's one of those movies I have a fever dream memory of, like you watched it when you were so little that you're not sure whether you imagined the entire movie. It was amazing to watch those two little mice get on that seagull. On which movies inspired her, Daniel Day-Lewis' performance in In the Name of the Father, 1993, made me realize what movies could do. But the super cheesy answer to that which is probably more accurate is Life with Mikey, 1993, which is about a child talent agency. I desperately wanted to be this chubby little girl who sang at the end of that movie. I love old screwball comedies, Bringing Up Baby, 1938, Arsenic and Old Lace, 1944, stuff like that. But my two favorite modern comedies are Wet Hot American Summer, 2001, and Hot Fuzz, 2007. It occurred to me that doing four musicals was maybe not a great career plan, but when certain opportunities come along, you throw the rules out the window. Is there a button on Hulu ads for I already, sick, thinking smoking is super scary and gross, please stop showing that girl peeling off her face? On Up in the Air, 2009, I thought it was going to be a comedy. I didn't understand that it would be an awards contender at all. The script changed a lot while we were making it, because we were making it when the bubble burst. Layoffs meant something else by the time that we went into production. The idea of a man who fires people for a living went from hitman to genocidal maniac. As a kid I would dream about saving boys from cliffs, not the other way around. Salary Pitch Perfect 3, 2017, $6 million.